Welcome to this Premier Training revision video that takes a look at the badges of trade. Most people, at some point, will sell something, either at a car boot sale, in the local paper, on a social media selling page, or on sites like eBay or Etsy. But does that mean we should pay income tax on the money we make? HMRC would expect to collect tax revenue from any individual whom it classes as trading. This implies that we need some way of determining whether or not an individual is trading when he or she sells things. The problem is, it isn't always obvious whether someone is trading or not. And if they are, and don't disclose the income and pay tax on it, they would in essence be committing tax evasion, which of course is a criminal offence. To help us decide whether someone is trading or not, HMRC use criteria known as the badges of trade. It's important to realise that these criteria need to be looked at together to create an overall picture rather than treating them individually and in isolation. The criteria used, or the badges of trade, are profit seeking motive, the number of transactions, the nature of the asset, existence of similar trading transactions or interests, changes to the asset, the way the sale was carried out, the source of finance, interval of time between purchase and sale, and the method of acquisition. Let's look at each of these in a little more detail. First on the list is profit motive. Is the nature of trade primarily to make a profit? Or was there another motive behind the sale, such as raising cash for day-to-day -day living or to fund something like a holiday? In a well-known legal case dating back to 1929, a businessman on a business trip to Germany found himself in a position to purchase one million toilet rolls, which he subsequently sold for a profit on his return to Britain. Even though this was the only time he had ever bought and sold toilet rolls like this, it was held in court to be trading income because the court decided that he must, very obviously, have had a good idea that he would be able to sell them profitably on his return to Britain. Otherwise he would never have contemplated buying them in the first place. Next is the frequency of transactions. Selling a few used toys to car boot sale once a year is very unlikely to be considered as trading. However, if you sell at car boot sales three or four times every week, it's clearly more likely to be a trading activity. The nature of the asset, sometimes referred to as the subject matter. If the item traded is something that gave you personal satisfaction or pride from owning, such as some art or a collection of some sort, it's less likely to be considered to be trading if you subsequently sell it. The existence of similar trading transactions or interests. If there's a history of similar trading transactions or a professional interest in the item being sold, then this might suggest that trading is taking place. For example, if a teacher sold a Harley Davidson motorbike, this is less likely to be a trading transaction than someone who is a professional bike mechanic. Next is changes to the asset, such as any improvements and supplementary work. If you carry out any kind of repair or improvement to an item before selling it, it's more likely to be classed as trading. This could include physical changes to the item, but also work such as actively marketing the product prior to sale, for example, through a website. Next is the way the sale was carried out, or the reason for sale, where the intentions of the taxpayer are more closely examined. For example, did the taxpayer purchase the asset for personal enjoyment and then simply change their mind, which wouldn't particularly indicate trading, or was the asset bought with the clear intention of selling it on, which would. The source of finance is next. If the asset was bought using short-term finance, a trade is more likely to exist, especially where the sale of the asset is needed to repay those same funds. 
the interval of time between the purchase and sale, or rather, the length of time you've owned the asset. The longer the item has been owned before it's sold, the less likely it is the sale would be classed as trading. If you buy something today and sell it tomorrow, that's much more likely to be trading than selling something you've owned for a number of years. And finally, the method of acquisition. How and why did we acquire the item in the first place? If, for example, it was acquired unintentionally, as the result of a gift or maybe an inheritance, it's likely that this would not be considered indicative of trading. Although there have been cases where something that was initially acquired without the intention of reselling it and was subsequently sold, that have been held to be trading. It's worth noting at this point that just because a particular transaction may not be classed as trading, doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be taxed. Many one-off transactions could, for example, fall within the scope of capital gains tax and be taxed in this way instead. OK, now we've looked at the badges of trade in a little more detail, let's look at a case study. Mark is a huge fan of model railways and has his own website covering everything from practical tips, upcoming exhibitions, a blog and so on. He also occasionally advertises some of his models for sale. And some of these sell for a few pounds and others for several hundred. In a few seconds you should pause the video and take a little time to think about the factors that would indicate whether Mark is trading or not. And when you've come up with your ideas, you should resume the video. So if you want to have a go at this yourself, please pause the video now. OK, well hopefully you've identified some of the key issues involved in deciding whether or not Mark is trading for tax purposes when he sells his model trains. Let's have a look. Profit-seeking motive. Firstly, why is Mark selling the trains now? Is it because they've increased in value so he knows he'll make a profit? Or is it perhaps to fund new trains for his layout? The frequency of transactions. Of course, the more trains that he sells through his website, the more likely it is that it would be construed as trading. The nature of the asset. There's a ready market in model trains. However, Mark, being a collector and enthusiast, will have had personal pride from owning them. The existence of similar trading transactions and interests. Mark runs a website and advertises items online which may indicate a steady flow of trading income. Changes to the asset. If Mark has improved or restored the trains, this would indicate possible trading. Also, the fact that he advertises them for sale could also indicate trading. The way the sale was carried out. Were the models originally bought for personal enjoyment or with the sole intention of advertising or promoting his website? The source of finance. Has Mark had to take out finance to buy stock or rare items that he would need to sell on to repay the finance? This might indicate trading. The interval of time between purchase and sale. Mark would also have to look at how long he'd owned the trains that he'd sold. The longer he'd owned them, the less likely it would be thought of as trading. And finally, the method of acquisition. How and why had Mark originally acquired the trains? Were they for example a gift or had he originally bought them to use on his own model train layout? In reality, there probably isn't enough information available here to make a definitive decision as to whether or not Mark is trading. But at least the badges of trade give us a framework to ask the right questions to make a well-informed judgement. As we covered earlier, the key is to look at all the various badges of trade together to build up a picture, and not just any one in isolation. The badges of trade are an important concept in business tax and are quite likely to crop up in your AAT business tax exam. You should ensure that you've learned what the badges are, 
what they mean, and also how to apply them to a given scenario. I hope this video has been helpful, and thanks for watching.